I used to lead quite a different social life than I do now. Um, I remember telling somebody a story about having, uh, I don't know, like 60 people in my house for a party. And by the time I finally got everybody out, it was like 4 or 5 in the morning. And I just laid down and fallen asleep when what woke me up was the sound of voices. And even after doing a sweep of the house, I don't know, maybe they came back in. Maybe they're outside smoking. And then uh, they came back in and went down to my basement. But I found six more people in my basement. And I tell that story now and people are like, six people in your basement you know 60 people in your house Earl how many how many phone numbers do you have on your phone and I'm like I have three or four so like yeah I could lose six people in my basement back in the day but now I don't have don't even have six phone numbers on my phone but uh, yeah different kind of social life so back in the day uh, I went to a party and I'd been I guess I'd been standing in the lobby of this party for a long time um, you know, not fully coming in. And uh, uh, my friend uh, Yap, Jakob, uh, came up to me and uh, he's like, Earl, why don't you come into the bar, dear? And I'm like, uh, Yap, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to stay here. He's like, why? What? What's the matter? I said, oh, every time I go to a party, something bad happens that makes me wish that I hadn't come. He went, oh, like what? And then right as he says, like what? I kid you not. Uh, this guy walks up to me, um, taps me on the shoulder and says, do you know the way to the kitchen? Or is there some place I could wash the blood out? And he opened up his hand, and his hand, he was cupping a pool of blood. And as he opened it, I think even more blood was in there than even he realized. Uh, blood poured down on my feet. Uh, I said, kitchen's right in there, man. And I looked at uh, Yap uh, as if, you know, does that answer your question? He's like, there, something terrible has happened. You could get over it. <laughs> oh, man. And then, uh, then at that same place, that same house, I went to another party there. And I learned uh, the art of house climbing. Uh, you go into uh, the house and you start in a corner. And what you try to do is the perimeter of every room and then maybe the entire floor. And then if it's another floor, you try to get up there as well without touching the ground. Um, and uh, I really took to this game. And uh, there was a, a, a long staircase leading up to the upper floor. And uh, it was kind of narrow. And I was able to get my back and feet against the wall. And I chimneyed my way up this uh, really tall um the ceiling to the staircase and uh, I went up there and someone else saw me and uh, they were a, a climber and so they knew immediately how to get up there and so they climbed up and then there was a couple people up so we're like you know we're like a good distance off the ground like 15 feet off the ground um, up there with our beer, beers and uh, talking and a whole bunch of people came running up the stairs grabbed their jackets and packs and started running down and one of them looked up at us because they heard our voices and it was panic it was like a stampede and one of them looked up at us and said the police aren't gonna like that and then kept running <laughs> oh okay so um about six or seven of my coworkers lived in this house, and sometimes more and sometimes less. And uh, at one point in time, uh, they were paying month to month. At one, so they got uh, um, their 30-day notice. And uh, as uh, they were coming up to into the office, uh, they overheard me talking about uh, my girlfriend and I uh, putting in bids on a house. And uh, so all, all these co-workers assumed that I was having them evicted and I was buying their house. And uh, there was a bunch of anger involved. And one of the guys like, uh, Earl, I don't, I, don't, I don't blame you, man. I know you like that house. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy, uh, you know, that, uh, that you're, you're, you're going to buy it. And I'm like, uh, and this is like straight up, like they came, they fully came to that conclusion without asking me about it. And I'm like, no, I'm I'm not buying your house, man. Uh, and they essentially, uh, as as one in a, a wide variety of different ways, uh, some nice, some not so nice, called me a liar. <laughs> and then so, so someone finally moved into their house, uh, and it wasn't me. 
and uh, the general consensus was that uh, my loan had fallen through. <laughs> they were like, they just did not want to accept the fact that I hadn't had them evicted. They really liked that. Uh, the uh, they were really happy to report that to the, the anti earl group uh, that uh, I'd had them evicted, and then uh, even after I had them evicted, I didn't follow through and purchase the house. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, that's probably why I only have a handful of phone numbers on my phone right now. I just, uh, I just don't, I just don't deal well with uh, large groups of uh, of people, evidently. <laughs> All right, I'll see you in the tubes.